begin by thanking the organizers for the invitation and the participants for the congenial atmosphere that has prevailed. Um, I will also start with an apology because this is a, re a repetition of a talk I gave in January. At that time, I, I uh, also apologized because the conference title included the phrase Higgs bundles, and this is not exactly about Higgs bundles. But uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm a bit safer <laughs> this time around. But anyways, so um, <clears throat> the, the subject of the talk is certain moduli spaces of meromorphic connections on P1. So for an idea of uh, what, what to expect, um, so the results will concern uh, the existence of hyperkähler metrics. relation to quiver varieties. And, uh, well, I'll say a little bit about Hodge, Hodge structures, E polynomials. And, uh, Conjecture of Hausel, Letelier, and Rodriguez Vallejas. <clears throat> Though the, I mean, what I'm talking about is not about this conjecture really at all. But how to get an extended conjecture. Anyway, so these are on, on moduli. Meromorphic connections on P1. And actually, it's, well, it will be even easier because there will all be connections on the trivial bundle. Um, okay. So we'll consider the, <coughs> so the, the, Case where you have simple poles is, is pretty well understood. So let me just describe this case, and this will be sort of as a model for the results that I'll explain later on when you have irregular connections. So the, the tame case we're on one with coordinate z, so we fix some points which will be poles for us. Um, we'll write d for the divisor. And without loss of gen generality, assume that uh, none of these poles are at infinity. So V will be the trivial bundle of rank N. <clears throat> and so uh, the exterior derivative gives us a connection here. So any other connection of V plus A, where A, well, I mean, you can say that A is a Higgs field. So A will be section here. <clears throat> okay. So what this means is that you can actually write A as a sum of constant matrices over the um, Z minus AI, <clears throat> and then the further condition that, uh, that there's no pole in infinity is that the sum of these matrices is zero. So these, these AI are constants. Okay. 
specify a moduli space, we fix um, adjoint orbits. So OI contained in a GLNC. <clears throat> so let, well, let's write a, so one for each pole. So we write O for the tuple. Um, and we'll assume that they're semi-simple. And then via the, so via the trace pairing, uh, we may think of these as co-joint orbits as well. So they come with a natural um, holomorphic symplectic structure. Actually, I'll say in a minute that they, they come with a bit more. But uh, <clears throat> so what, we, what we do is, is we define the moduli space uh, to be the space of connections. Remember, V is fixed. That could be the trivial bundle. Um, such that the residue um, at the pole, at the ith pole, is in the OI. And we take this moduli, modulo isomorphism. So, I mean, just from the expression we get, this means that AI an OI. Um, so this, <clears throat> so w once you fix P1, and I mean the degree here will be zero, you get a module, a Durham space of meromorphic, meromorphic connections. Uh, so this will be an open set because the uh, a generic bundle of degree zero on P1 will be, a, will be trivial. So the, the complement is actually a divisor. But anyway, this is the space that we're going to consider. <clears throat> okay, so in this case, I mean, we, we can say exactly what the isomorphisms are. So, I mean, the automorphisms of V are, are constant, constant uh, gauge transformations. So if, If G is in V, then G actually acts on A like this, but this will vanish. So the action is very, it's just conjugation. It's simultaneously conjugation. So, <clears throat> I mean, since V is constant, so we can identify this moduli space. as tuples of matrices in this product of co-joint orbits subject to the condition that they sum to zero and then quotient by conjugation. So this, you can, so what we can what we can do is think of this as a moment map condition. So the diagonal action, so G acts on each of these um, just by conjugation and the inclusion is a, is a moment map. And then on the, for the diagonal action, the moment map is a sum. So this we can consider as this for the, at the level zero for the moment map. So, um, 
In case you're concerned about this, this will just be the, so this, each of these is an affine variety. This is an affine variety. So the pre-image of the mold map is also affine, and this will be an affine GIT portion. Um, okay, so. So in an unpublished uh, paper, Kronheimer constructed, is it this? Constructed hyperkähler metrics on O, on cojoin orbits O, so by hyperkähler reduction on the product, One gets a metric on on this moduli space. <coughs> um, so there's also a realization of these spaces as quiver varieties. So let me just try to quickly explain what these are. So a quiver. Uh, Q consists of two sets Q naught, Q1, and two maps H and T. So this is a directed graph. So these are two finite sets. And uh, H and T, so this will be this, Q1 will be the set of arrows and Q naught will be the set of vertices. So for each arrow you head in a tail. the two maps, I mean, yeah, one can, it's literally a picture like this. So a dimension vector is just choosing a positive integer for each vertex. And the representation Q, if you take a quiver with a direction vector, the representation is a tuple of maps, one for each arrow, um, so that P A lies in <coughs> as a matrix going from C. Uh, of A to the dimension of the head of A. So what you've done is you've, you've picked, chosen a vector space at each, each of the vertices and then a representation is just a, a linear map for uh, each of the arrows. <coughs> be the space of representations of QD, and then for the fixed D, there's also a group. So we've chosen a vector space at each vertex, and what we take is GL of that vector space, and we, then we take the product. G, this group acts on the space of representations. And um, you can call the quotient a quiver variety. But we're, we're, what we're interested, what we'll be interested in is these 
Nakajima quiver varieties. So what you do first is you take Q to be the double, Q bar is the doubled quiver. So what this means is that for every arrow you draw one in the opposite direction. Now for, for each of these you have, you have a, the space of maps in the opposite direction. So this, these are naturally dual to each other. And so you get the cotangent bundle of this. So the representations of Q bar be is it T star and then um, the Nakajima quiver variety is, so since, since the action here will come from an action on this, uh, the, the action on the cotangent bundle is necessarily uh, Hamiltonian. So we can form this, this uh, symplectic, algebraic symplectic quotient. And this will be the, <coughs> Nakajima quiver variety. So the lambda will be in s the sums of the GL di. The, the example which is important for us is to start with this quiver. And with this dimension vector. So D will be N, N minus 1, N minus 2, Q and 1. Okay. So what, what, what is true is that the space of representations here for the doubled quiver, so we have an arrow going each way, is isomorphic to a, a semi-simple co-join orbit. In GLN. So, um, just for one leg, leg, uh, yeah, um, so what, what, what one does is one chooses uh, scalar, scalar uh, values for the, for the moment map, but values for the moment map at each at each of these vertices and uh, the cojoin orbit you get will have the, the eigenvalues of this cojoin orbit will be these will be the differences of the eigenvalues here sorry uh, this is the end here So now, so I, I didn't say something here. This is what happens when you reduce at these, at the product of these, um, the groups corresponding to these vertices, but we haven't used this action. So this action will be the conjugation. So now if you have a, a diagram that looks like this, that has several of these legs, The same, so n minus one, n minus one. <clears throat> so 
Now the diagram for this gives you a product of these co-adjoint orbits, and then since they're all attached to the same vertex here, you have a simultaneous action of that GLM. So this gives you um, precisely this expression that we had uh, before. Okay, so this, this result is due to Crowley Bovi. Um, so, I mean, what you can say is this. This open to RAM space can be realized as a quiver variety. a star-shaped quiver. Uh, so by star-shaped, what is meant is that there's a central vertex. And if we, if we drew this differently, it could look like a star. So there's one central vertex and then one leg. There are several legs emanating from that vertex. Another, another fact, so this is Hausel Letali and Rodriguez Galeas, is that the cohomology of this space, um, so we have, what, what it is, is it's a smooth affine variety, so there's a mixed Hodge structure on the, on the cohomology, but um, what is true is that this is, is a pure, has a pure Hodge structure. Okay. So just to explain, um, Conjecture of theirs, I'll mention a bit about character varieties. So given a given a connection of the kind that we're considering, you can take the monotremy representation. Um, so there's a monotremy representation. So this goes from pi one of the of p one minus the divisor into GLN p. Um, but one knows, I mean, one can be very uh, precise about how this what this group looks like. So it has one generator for each pole, and then the relation is that the generators must. Uh, must uh, have product identity. So now, <coughs> the parameterized space of representations, um, since, we, since we fixed some data here, we'll probably have to do the same thing here. And now we fix uh, adjoint conjugacy classes in GLN. And then uh, the space of representations, so the Betty space, so I'll write C for the tuple. This will be tuples in the product of these conjugacy classes. Whose 
products is the identity matrix. And then we quotient by the diagonal conjugation action as before. <clears throat> so taking this monodromy, monodromy representation, I mean essentially if, uh, if the CI is the, is the exponentiation of the OI, then this, this MDR star will map into this space. So, um, so what we have, so if we took all connections, then this monodromy would give uh, a biholomorphism here. So we're only taking ones that are, live on the trivial bundle. So this is a, this is an open, this will be an open subset here. Um, so um, a question of interest because it's not answered is as to, about the mixed Hodge structure on this variety. So there's a, but I mean there is a conjecture for that but there's also a guess that uh, I mean, this will have, no matter what, this will have a pure part. And then this, <clears throat> so this has, um, this will have some mixed Hodge hod structure. And then the conjecture is that the, via this map, the pure part of the Hodge structure on the Betty space maps to the, um, to the cohomology of the open Duram space. Um, so where this came about is from, uh, from observations in, in low dimensional examples. It, it was just, uh, it was some, through explicit knowledge of certain classes here, and they, it was noticed that they generate the cohomology here, when one can actually uh, be explicit about, about, the, about the map. <clears throat> okay, so, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to deal with this conjecture, but it appears to be pretty difficult and involves some, um, I mean, the people who are working on it seem to be using some very um, intense Donaldson-Thomas theory and theory of cohomological Hall algebras. But, uh, so this is well beyond what I'm going to be doing here. So in any case, what I will be doing is discussing how this uh, extends to connections with higher order poles. So the irregular case, uh, let me sort of set things up. Okay, so, <clears throat> Let's just consider the local situation for first. Um, a formal type. Is just an expression. Of this form. So it's, it will be the polar part of a, of a connection. And what we're going to assume is that the BIs are diagonal and that the, the leading order term BK has distinct eigenvalues. So 
this will be a local model for, for irregular connections of order k at a, at a, given, at a given pole. So we say that a meromorphic connection A has formal type B if there's a, a formal gauge transformation such that G A G inverse, which takes it to B. Okay, so this is a gauge transformation over the, over the ring of uh, pow formal power series, so this may, may not necessarily converge. Um, so you, as Jacques was speaking about on Friday, uh, for such a <coughs> for such a connection, there will exist something called the Stokes data, which parametrize um, different holomorphic isomorphism classes of connections, which have the same which have the same formal type. But, uh, I mean, so, and that Stokes data is sort of the analog of the monodromy. Uh, Phil Bolsch sometimes calls it uh, generalized monodromy data. Okay, so now let me just introduce some notation. Uh, we'll let RK be a, the, Truncated polynomial ring, so that GLN of RK looks like matrices like this. So that A is in GLN C, and the XIs are arbitrary matrices. And uh, so GLN1 of RK. So this will have an evaluation map just by setting Z equals zero. So this will be the kernel of the evaluation map. So it's just the constant term is the identity matrix. ones are arbitrary. <clears throat> um, and then we have the Lie algebras. So this will be, of course, arbitrary matrices everywhere. And we can identify the dual via the trace residue pairing by Laurent polynomials in matrix with values in matrices. So we can write this as z to the minus k. Um, How we pair something in here with something in here is we multiply the matrices, take the trace, and then take the residue term. So that means that we would multiply this with this and then take the trace, and this with this and take the trace. So this gives, gives you the duality pairing. <clears throat> okay, so now, now we can uh, define the moduli space, an analogous moduli space as that's what we did for simple poles. So we fix a divisor of poles
And just for a simplicity, I'll write zi for z minus ai. And to fix a moduli space, we also fix a formal type for each pole. The KIs will be the orders of the poles. And then the BI will look, I mean, it will have an expression like that. <clears throat> um, so if we write the, if we write B for this tuple, and we define the drum space as the space of meromorphic connections on P1 with the, over the trivial bundle um, with poles bounded by D and formal type B i at the pole A i, modular isomorphism. So as before, you can write Nabla equals D plus A, and this time A will be of this form. So. What you see are the polar parts. So you have a i, k i over z to the k i, z i, k i. Z. So let's just write this as the sum of a i, z i, and then. Because, because the, because uh, there's no, again, we assume that infinity is not a pole. And so, again, we have the same condition that the sum of the residue terms has to be, has to be zero. So this is the sum of the AI1 is zero. <clears throat> so now, um, The point here was that a formal type can be thought of as an element in, in this uh, dual of, the, of this Lie algebra. So the formal type condition uh, I mean this condition here that has formal type bi <coughs> This implies that AI has to be in the cojoint co orbit of OI. In this dual of this Lie algebra. So we get a similar expression as before as, as a, of this modulus, moduli space as a as a symplectic quotient of a product of cojoint orbits but this time in these in these larger groups so So each of these BIs has an action of GLN of RK, but this contains the, uh, the constant group GLNC um, 
each copy. And this is this is the action. This is the this is the copy that's acting here. Okay. So now, given Oh, join orbit. Oh, in one of these rules of, a, of the Lie algebra, there there is a framed space. O tilde, such that uh, so O tilde is isomorphic to T star of GLNC uh, cross O bar, and O bar is a cojoint orbit for the GL1 of RK, GLN1 R RK, and can realize uh, a cojoint orbit for O as a reduction by O tilde by the torus of, for some value of the moment map, which will be actually the, this will be the residue term. <clears throat> okay, so now, so, so now, we look at, uh, since GLN1 of RK is unipotent, and this O bar is a homogeneous space for, for this group, this will be an even dimensional affine space. There's a flat hyperkähler metric here. And then <coughs> Kronheimer, this is, sorry, this was the unpublished paper. Um, Kronheimer shows that T star of G, or actually, I think any reductive group here, this has a hyperkähler metric. From this, you get one on these O tildes. And then, if you have one, sorry, yeah, one on the O tildes, but then you can recover these O's by reduction by a torus, so this will have a maximal compact. So that means that you can get a hyperkähler metric by reduction. This will be by some, uh, I mean, u of n cross the, a compact torus and one for each pole. Okay, so, so by construction, These metrics are expected to be complete. <clears throat> but 
um, from this non-abelian Hodge correspondence. This is, we have, this is open here. But we expect um, this, I mean, this, should, this will have a hyperkähler metric um, for which one of the other structures is a, is a moduli space of Higgs bundles with poles. Um, so this would be um, So this is due to Bolchen because um, so you expect so I mean if this is open and it has a complete hyperkähler metric, it, it can't really be the one coming from this. So these should not be the same. Why it should be complete? Um, uh, I feel like I'm confusing things now, but uh, no, I don't have a good. Well, maybe maybe I'll go on a little bit and then. Uh, because in the okay, so there's an so the next thing I was going to talk about are these quiver quivers with multiplicities and their corresponding varieties. So there's an analogy with the usual quivers case, and you get complete metrics here. And it, these should probably come from this from the same kind of idea. Okay, so okay, and then. So with a collaborator, so I've been working with Tamas Hausel and Dimitri Viss, and what we, we have, a, well, it's sort of an arithmetic result. Um, so one has an explicit for the uh, e-polynomial uh, okay so just uh, for amusement's sake for n equals two um, this is Q to the K minus three and Q to the K minus M minus one. One to the M minus one minus two to the M minus one over minus one. So where K is a total or total order of poles. This is this is the degree of the divisor, and m the number of poles. So what it, what it, what what is going on is that you have several poles, some of which could be simple, and then it only depends on these numbers. <clears throat> so in general, you get for rank n, you get a sum um, over the partitions of n, and uh, the sign depends on the length of the partition. So now I wanted to mention this link with the, there are these quivers with multiplicities, and one should also have a realization of these spaces as the associated variety. <coughs> So 
suppose Q is a quiver, then a, a set of multiplicities is again, you just choose an integer for each vertex. Um, so a representation, so now if we also choose a dimension vector, a representation um, can be defined. And just for the sake of simplicity, let, let's just draw something like this. So say the dimensions are S and R, and the multiplicities are A and B. So what you want is, and you have an arrow here, so B will be map from, so RB, remember this was the truncated polynomial ring. Uh, sorry, what have I done? So, so this should be S. So the multiplicity gives you the, how far you truncate the polynomial ring along and then, so B should be an element in here. And then what we do, what kind of map is it? What you do is you take the GCD of the multiplicities and you make it linear over R of the GCD. So then, so then you have a space of, rep a, similarly you have a space of representations. And then there will be a group um, which depends on the multiplicities and the dimension vector. So this is GL BI of R and I. And then, As before, if we have this, uh, so this is the dimension vector. If we take this leg, and we take multiplicities like this, so we have a one here, and k's everywhere else, uh, the corresponding, so reduction by, where we're just reducing at these ones, so. So this will yield a co-join orbit. In GL N. If you're, if you're following, maybe you should ask what's happening, because this group is is a uh, is not reductive. So what what is going on? <coughs> um, so if you if you choose the value of the moment map generically. What happens is that the pre-image of the moment map is actually a, a trivial principal bundle for this group. So there's, there's no real issue about how to define the quotient. So in this case, everything is, is okay. Um, so we have an analog of the theorem of of uh, probably Bovi here. So one, one can realize, um, this open the RAM space as a variety associated to a quiver with multiplicities. Again, the 
the quiver will be star-shaped. Um, so, so Yamakawa has a paper where he, des he describes this, but for some reason, he limits himself to rank two. And I think he was, well, I think because there's a non-reductive group, he was a bit cautious and uh, refers to it only a set theoretic quotient. Okay, so and then the last, the, the last theorem I stated about the Heim space was this purity theorem of Hausel, Leterrier, and Rodriguez Vallejo. So one expects the same thing in this situation too, and we're pretty close to proving this now, I think. Um, so we expect this to have pure cohomology. Um, so one reason is the analogy with the quiver uh, story. And another reason is that because purity implies that your E polynomial has positive coefficients. Um, there's a reason for me to think this. I think, I think we know something more about, yeah, so it seems a bit silly. But in, in, any, in any case, for the, for all the ones that you can work out, that you can actually see it. So, but I mean, I think I think this is true. So if if once once one can prove this, and you can also reformulate the conjecture about purity and and the comparison with the corresponding um, Betty space. So in the in the irregular case. One also has a has a, a Betty space, so this is all, often called the wild character variety. And uh, so, um, in other work with. Uh, Thomas Hausel and Martin Meleb, we've, we're also able to compute the E polynomial for this variety. And it appears that an analog of the purity conjecture also holds, but I mean, again, this is all speculation, and it looks like it would be difficult to, to prove it. Anyways, I'll, I'll stop here. You mean by find? So this is what this is what this 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 is encodes the Stokes data. Oh, okay, yeah, Jacques went over this on Friday. Like, so for the leading order term, you had the so the B was B K over Z K. And then we said this has distinct eigenvalues. So depending, using the differences of the eigenvalues here, you can define certain sectors in the, uh, in the plane. Um, so there was also, say A has formal type B. So there was a formal gauge transformation Taking this to this, and so so in each of these, you, this is simply connected, and you can find this. You can find a a frame, a flat frame here, and if you insist that it's asymptotic to this, then it's uniquely determined, and then and then the transition functions 
and give you the slope for that. The other terms in this, suppose they're not diagonalizable. Well, actually, once you have fix, once you fix this one to be regular semi-simple, you can diagonalize the rest of them. But I mean, the way that the, the theory goes, it's usually you start with something in in the maximal torus. I mean, there are analogs where it gets more complicated where you have non-split maximal tori and stuff, so, but, I mean, this is, the sim this is the simplest case. And, I mean, I don't know. If you fix this to be regular semi-simple and you have anything else here, then you can actually diagonalize the other term. It's what encodes a Stokes data and the monogamy, the topological monogamy. 